Hello and welcome to part 1 of the series on how to create a Twitch UI with React.js. In this series, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to go from scratch to the website you see in front of you, which is the Twitch UI, with the help of React.js. In this first part, we are going to set up the project and we are going to create the different components which we see in front of us. So let's get started right away. I'm going to start by opening up the folder where I want to create the project and then I'm going to launch PowerShell right here. I'm then going to write npx create react app and then the title of our app which will be the Twitch UI. I'm also going to specify a template which will be TypeScript and I'm going to say that we will be using the npm package manager. I will be back in a couple of seconds. Now that the project has initialized, I'm going to cd into it and I'm going to open it up in my code editor which is Visual Studio Code. Next, I'm going to open up a terminal in my code editor and I'm going to run npm run start which will start the development server for our React.js application. As you can see, it opens up my web browser and it will go to localhost 3000 to open up the web page and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to open it right here. So to get started, we're going to open up the Twitch UI and we're going to look at which components we can find in this page. So if we scroll to the page, we'll see that we have three different components. So we have our navigation bar component at the top, then we have a sidebar at the left, and we have a content section in the center of the page. So if we draw this out, we have our web browser, really nice. We have the navigation bar, which is right here. Then we have our sidebar on the left, right here. And then the content section, right here. So we actually have three different components. And with those components, we can build our page. So don't get me wrong, we have a lot more components to cover. But those are the three main components. We are going to start by implementing those in our projects. We're first going to create a uh, components folder. Then we are going to create the folders for our different components, which will be the navbar, the sidebar, and the content section. And we are now going to create one component together. So we are going to create the navbar.csx, and we are also going to create our navbar.css, which will hold our styling. So right here, we are going to import React. We are going to import our styling. And we are going to create the function. And we will make it return a div, which will say, I am the navbar. So I'm going to copy this over for the other two components. So I've printed the different components and if we look at the web page, we will see nothing appearing yet. Um, that's correct because we still have to import it in our app.tsx. So we are first going to remove everything we see in here, except for our div, but we will remove the class name. Next, we are going to remove the logo since we won't be needing that. We are going to remove this test. We are going to clear out our app.css and I'm going to write hello world. If we look at the browser, we'll see hello world, but we actually want to see our components. So we are going to do this by importing them. So at the top, we will have our navbar. We will have our sidebar right then. And to finish it off, we are going to have a content section like so. As you can see, Visual Studio Code automatically imported the components for me. But if you want to do it manually, you have to import the component name from the directory where the component is. So if I save this up, we will see that we now have the three different components rendering inside our page. That's good. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to change the background color of our components. We are going to start with the navbar and we are also going to change the element which with the navbar is being displayed. Right now it's a div, but it should actually be a nav. So I'm going to change this to a nav tag and I'm going to give it an ID of navbar. And now we can target our navbar by saying hashtag navbar. And I want to give it a background color of purple. Um, as you can see, we now have a purple navbar. I'm going to do the same for the sidebar. Um, 
only then I'm not going to make it purple. Let's see which color should we use? Maybe yellow. Let's do yellow. Background color yellow. And then for our content, we are going to create a nice green color. Um, let's see, green. Um, so as you can see, we now have our three different components rendering with the correct background color. And this also the reason why we have to import our uh, CSS, because if we don't do that, for example, if I leave this out, we will see that our content won't have the styling applied because it doesn't load in the content the CSS file. So this is really important if your styles are not working. But our styles are working, so it's really good. Um, but right now, everything is displayed underneath each other. This is not what we want because if we look at our image, we have a navbar at the top, a sidebar at the left, and a component on the right. So to create this layout, we will be using the HTML grid. We are going to open up our app.css and then we are going to write, um, well, we are first going to give an ID to this one, which will be landing. And we're going to write hashtag landing. And then we want to say that we want to display this as a grid. So now that we are displaying it as a grid, why isn't it working? Well, we first have to define grid areas. So we are going to create some areas, which will be a navbar and then a sidebar and a content section and the way that it's uh, working is if you look at it like so we have two columns for our navbar and on the next row we have a column for the sidebar and a column for the content so if i save this up we'll see that we have two columns right here and then two columns right here but um, the columns or well the areas are not being assigned to the components yet so that's what we are going to do right now because the navbar should take all the width and not share it with the sidebar. So in my navbar.css, I'm going to say grid area, and this will be the navbar. So as you can see, it has now successfully assigned the navbar to that area. I'm going to do the same for our sidebar. So grid area will be sidebar, and for the content, we will also have a grid area, like so. So now we have successfully assigned the components to the grid, but as you can see, the sidebar is a lot bigger than it is on a Twitch page. So how are we going to fix this? Well, we can define how big our column should be in our grid. We are going to open up the app.css again, and we are going to say grid template columns. And then let's see, we are going to write 100 pixels and 100 pixels. So if I save this up, we will see that we have two columns, which are both 100 pixels. The sidebar is 100 pixels, the content is 100 pixels and a navbar, since it is taking up two columns, is 200 pixels. But instead of um, predefining 100 pixels, we want the sidebar to be something around 220 pixels. And we want the content section to fill the rest of the page. Well, the rest of the width of the page. So to do this, we will be using the auto keyword. So if I fill in auto, it automatically fills in the rest of the page. So as you can see, we have a nice little sidebar. And the content section takes up the rest of the page. So now we have successfully defined the width of our um, grid, but we also want to make the grid take up the whole height of the page. So if I open up our inspector right here and we are going to inspect our page, we will see that we have our landing, which is a grid, but this landing is only 42 pixels big. So we are going to define a height as well, and it will be 100 feet wide. As you can see, 100 view wide fills in the whole page, so that's correct, that's good. But as you can also see, we also have a page divided by two because our navbar is taking up the half of the height, which is not what we want. We want the navbar to be only maybe 50 pixels, and we want the sidebar and the content section to take up the rest of the height. So just as that we did with our columns, we can do the same with our rows. So I'm going to write grid template rows, and I'm going to say 50 pixels and auto and as you can see the first row takes up 50 pixels and the second row takes up the rest of the page which is exactly this so now that we have the layout of the page we are going to change the colors into the colors of the twitch y we are going to pick the color picker and we're going to select the navigation and instead of saying um, purple we are going to say this 
and as you can see it now fills in the correct color and we are going to do the same for the content section right here this is this one and then for the sidebar right there we have this one and now we have exactly the same colors as the twitch UI on the page that we have created right here but the text is no longer visible because it is a little bit dark so to fix this we are going to create a white text well we are going to color it white so I'm going to copy this over to the navbar and then we are going to copy it over to the content section and as you can see we now have the text being visible on the page which is really good so to finish it off we are going to change the font size of our text and we are going to be using the Robota font uh, we are going to open up the uh, font.google.com page and right here we see the Robota font appearing if it is not appearing you can type in Robota right here and you will see it so then we can choose our styles and we will pick the light the regular and the medium Oh, and I didn't pick the regular, I think. Um, and we are going to click Embed, Import, and then copy this over. We are then going in our app.css, and we are going to place it at the top of our CSS. And as you can see, we now have imported the Roboto font, and it's also explaining how we should use it. So if I copy this over, and for example, say the navbar, uh, we can say that we want a font family of Roboto. So if I save this up, we will see that we have a different font for the navbar than for the sidebar. So if we comment this out, we'll see that it is reverting back to the old font. And if we comment this not out, we will see that it is using the new font. So might be hard to notice, but it is there. Then we have our sidebar, and then we have our content. And now we have successfully used the Roboto font. We can check this by inspecting the element and as you can see we have font family Roboto. So now you can see it a little bit more clear. If I switch this on we will see this and if I switch it off we will see this. So this is it for the first episode. I hope you could follow along. I want to thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.